All right, so we're back in that article, uh, Moors, Moabites, and Berbers. Are these names and people historically synonymous? Analyzing historical, biblical, and archaeological correlations by Sheikway L. of the Moorish American Research Group for the Moors Science Society, March 23rd, 2017. All right, and we're going to page uh, 10. All right, so just keep in mind everything we've already read and gone over. Just, you know, there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of information. We just want to make sure we cover everything and uh, we don't leave anything out. Try to uh, explain and talk about, you know, correlate everything. So I just want to read this part here, this article by Sheikh Elway. So it says, Prophet Noble Dwali makes a critical claim that must be examined here. He states the Moorish, who were ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca, in the circle 7 Quran chapter 47 verse 6 here Ali is saying that the Moabites founded the city of Mecca all right Moabites which puts the location of Moab in central and southern Arabia deviating from the commonly accepted geographical boundaries of Moab for very early sources Mecca has an ancient name which is rendered Mesha all right is Mesha a play on the name Mecca What's also interesting to note in the previous reference, Mesha has as one of its meaning given as salvation, an epithet given to the word Messiah, Mesha, Meshi, which appears to be a phonetic variant of face value. Conversely, Mesha is also king of Moab. All right, we're going to get into Mesha, king of Moab, that existed outside the biblical narrative because he exists in the Bible and he was an enemy of the Israelites. All right. But he was a Moabite, right? King Mesha. Correlations can be drawn between these two points. Egyptian born independent Egyptologist Mustafa Gadala elucidates the Moorish connection to Moab, but also its connection to ancient Egypt. Now he says, this guy, this combined alliance of rulers, Berbers and Arabs, Berbers and Arabs, mercenaries, right? pirates, mercenaries, and tax collectors had a common origin. The Moabite desert region. Diodorus Book 1, 28, 1, 4 tells of an Egyptian colony at present-day Moab, which is the origin of the Arab and Jews who collaborated to govern Iberia. Arab and Jews collaborated to govern Iberia. Arab, talking about Muslims, Moors, Moabites, Arabs, Ishmaelites. We're talking about Jews, Sephardic Jews. We're talking about Hebrews, Canaanite Hebrews. What are we talking about? Edomites. What are we talking about here when we're talking about Jews? We're talking about Israelites? I don't think so. So, you see, they got together. Who? Arab and Jews. Who got kicked out in 1492? From Iberia. It was Arab and Jews, or what they say, Moors and Jews. In 1492, same people got kicked out. That the nation of the Polshi and Pontus and that of the Jews, which lies between Arabia and Syria, were founded as colonies by certain emigrants from their country, Egypt. All right? You see that? So all these places were founded by emigrants who were coming from their country, so-called Egypt. Are we talking about Tamari? See how these always people emigrating? They don't really know where from. Where is Egypt? Why is it in parentheses? What part? Where's the history? Where's the proof? And this is the reason why it is long established institution among these two people to circumcise their male children. Hmm. We just read that, right? The other the custom having been brought over from Egypt. The location mentioned by Diodorus is the vicinity of the Moa. Alright, so check this out. Because we, we got to dodge the hijack because this author, right, Moorish author is going what today's places, place names are. Because we know Moses left Egypt too, right? But that was here in America. We're talking about, we're talking about Little Egypt. We're talking about the Mississippi. What are we talking about? Ohio Valley. What are we talking about when they're talking about Moses left Egypt? We know it was over here. So this same Egypt has to be over here because Diodorus is from way back in those times. And there is a Moab. Moab, Utah. If you keep going east, you'll run into Egypt or Tamari. The location of Moab is very important in understanding the identification of the Moorish, Moorish alliance and thus the dynamics of history in Iberia. It's very important. The location of Moab. Moab. Moab is the origin of three groups. Arabs, Syrians. All right, we're going to get into the Syrians. 
There's a lot of proof of Syrians being here. Scythians, Scythians, uh, Berbers, and Jews. Origin of these three groups that joined forces to control more Spain. They joined forces. Or oh, they thought the Jews and Arabs were fighting today. Berbers. But they actually got together to control more Spain. We're not talking about Israelites when they're talking about Sephardic Jews. We're talking about different kinds of Hebrew nations. We're not talking about the sons of Jacob that much here or at all. Berbers and Arabs got together to control more Spain. Bold italicizes his hints. All right. Now, Gadal's reach was pivotal in this regard. We read further in Egyptian Romani on page 150 that the Moabite region was also the source of the Arabic, Hebrew, and Aramaic Syriac dialects, which were offshoots of the ancient Egypt, Egypt language. Are they talking about Paleo Hebrew? Uh, Ibn Hassan died in 1064. The medieval Arabic scholar of Cordoba recognized that Aramaic, Syriac, Hebrew, and Arabic were kindred dialects derived from the Mudah. The dialect in which the Quran had been disclosed, right? So where does this Quran, this this Mudar originate? Later in chapter 12, we will show that Mudar is an ancient Egyptian term meaning language. So it just means language. It doesn't mean a specific one. It just means the word language. And that all three languages that is, are offshoots of the ancient Egyptian language. Ancient Tamari. Tamari, you mean, from America? Tamari. Remember, you got to see what they're trying to tell us and all these things. You got to start putting things together and, and, and read between the lines. The Moorish Alliance never forgot their Moabite origin. They never forgot they came from Utah, Moab, or they were there. Christian Chronicles sometimes refer to the Almoravis as Moabites. Christian Chronicles, again, sometimes refer to the Almoravids, the Almor, the Almor. Moravites as Moabites, Moravites, Moabites, Moravites, Moabites. There are numerous references to the Moabites in Chronica Adefonsi. And the reference to Ali and Texufinus Tashufin as kings of the Moabites would seem to support the theory that this term refers to Almoravites. This revelation of the Mudar language being the language of the, that Holy Quran of Mecca was revealed in and serves as a stunning and little known fact as per the historical records of the Almoravid etymological trace to Moab will be analyzed in depth shortly. We continue to read from page 169 of Egyptian Romani. Tracing the history of Arabic language we will lead us to ancient Egypt, to Mary, ancient America, to Mary. Right, if you trace the Arabic language, it's going to go back to to Mary. All right. Ibn Hassan, the medieval Arabic scholar of Cordoba, recognized that Aramaic, Syriac, Hebrew, and Arabic were kindred dialects derived from the Muda, the dialect in which the Quran had been disclosed, the original home of the Arabic, the Arabic of the Quran, the Arabic of the Quran, not today's Arabic, the Arabic of that time period, the ancient, came from the northwestern Arabian Peninsula. These three kindred dialects, Aramaic, Syriac, Hebrew, and Arabic, originated from the Moab region which was under control of ancient Egypt, which was under control of ancient Egypt. So remember that when Joshua drove these Phoenician Canaanites, Moabites out of the Canaan land, they had to ask permission from the Pharaoh to settle where they had to settle, right? Because this was under control of ancient Egypt. It is therefore a logical step to consider the role of the ancient Egypt language as it relates to the later formulated Arabic language. To decipher the ancient Egyptian language and its grammar and syntax, modern day Egyptologists study the Arabic language. They assume that Arabic being offshoot of their ancient Egyptian language would share much of the same grammar, syntax and vocabulary. It was generally the right assumption and thus Egyptologists were able to address the subject of the ancient Egyptian grammar and syntax. The ancient Egyptian controlled Moabite region is regarded as the home of the Mudar language, the forerunner of Arabic. The name Mudar is an abbreviated form of the ancient Egyptian term Meduniter, meaning the words language of angels, gods, the language of gods, of the angels, original language. It is no accident that Muslims say that Arabic is the language of angels, in imitation of the ancient Egyptian Meduniter. The people of this ancient Egyptian colony, Moabi, spoke and wrote the Egyptian language. Script found, scripts found in Moabi region look exactly like the ancient Egyptian demotic style of writing. The ancient Egyptians were the only people in the Moabi region who had an available writing surface papyri. 
and associated writing tools with pens and inks. When ancient Egypt lost power in Asia, there was no one to maintain a literate mood or language, and as a result, no more than a handful of written texts were found. Because of writing was is not part of the nomadic life, a fact that was also affirmed by Ibn Khaldun in his Muda Kidima, as shown in the last chapter of his book. All right, so I just want to read this, uh, you know, correlation with this author saying about, you know, Moab and how it's related to Egypt and ancient Egyptian language related to Arabic and original tongues and stuff. So you can get an idea. But when we're talking about ancient Egypt, you got to dodge the hijack. We're talking about America. We're talking about ancient Tamari. 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 Ray. All right. All right, so again, before we continue, I just wanted to show this chronology, right, of Noah's sons, right? Just to remind you, Ham, right, Ham, right? We got Shem, the land, right? The three sons, right? The land got spitted between their, them, and they each got a lot, a part of the earth. Shem got the middle, right? Shem, Shem with Eber, and Abraham and the Hebrews come out of, right? And then Ham, right? Ham with Canaan. Mizraim, Cush, Foot, Sidon, Nimrod come from, right? Now remember we talked about the Phoenicians, right? So it says that the descendants of Canaan settled Phoenicia or Canaan. Same people, all right? These are the people who got driven out, all right? They got driven out. These are the same people that got driven out of the land of Canaan. These are the descendants of Ham. They weren't supposed to settle there. The descendants of Mizraim, or Menes, are the Egyptians, all right? We're about to go read that. All right, so Chaldea, it says Nimrod became the Chaldeans or Babylonians. We're about to read that as well. So this chronology is kind of going with what this uh, Moorish uh, author, scholar is about to tell us. All right, so let's go back to that article. Again, just wanted to re show this for perspective again all right for perspective all right touch the hijack touch the hijack all right so we're back in the article moors moabites and berbers are these the names you know associate or synonymous right that's the article uh so just want to read this part so he goes into moab egypt and the moorish migrations to north africa right so he actually cites procopius we already got into that ourselves right how when they found that these, these tribes were very populous and got driven out, right? They got taken out and they had the Phoenician tongue with them and all that. So remember, we read that already. Now let's continue. Now it says, in other early works, we find similar references of an early migration from Egypt to Mauritania. In fact, it is noted that these people that migrated to Mauritania as the first settlers of Egypt, which may speak to the ethnicity of the early Egyptians, he states that Mizraim, right? We saw it in the, in the chronology timeline, right? That he was the founder of Egypt. Or first settlers of Egypt, Mizraim, or Menes, right? Are supposed to have been the earliest colonists of Mauritania. For the authors of the universal history mark that the Mizraim, or called Mauritani, in the Jerusalem Targum on Gen Genesis 10, numerous colonies of Phoenicians also were early planted here. Procopius mentions two pillars of white stone as standing there in his time with the following inscriptions in the Phoenician language and character. Now listen, again, Procopius told us that he found, he saw it for himself. We are the Canaanites who fled from Joshua. There was two pillars there that said this. We are the Canaanites who fled from Joshua. We fled from Jahawashi. Why would somebody flee from Jahawashi? The son of Nun, the notorious robber emphasis mine right he, he they're they're mad he's a, he robbed us all right morse 1812 page 703 another reference all right an important aspect in the above is that per these authors the jerusalem targum recognizes mizraim and maritani eponymous men representing nations as one in the same one in the same this would highlight a possible relationship between two nations that may have been connected in a time that we cannot pinpoint. 19th century author Baldwin notes, however, that there were two splits between the connect connected empire composed of Egypt and Babylon in the years 5000 BC, 
and then 3500 BC. Beside the name Moabites, Moors were also recorded as Chaldeans, all right? A later name for Babylon. Moabites, Moors were also recorded as Chaldeans, a later name of Babylon in the Christian records. This is by Medicott and Palliser, 2000, page 159. Moabites, Moors were also recorded as Chaldeans, all right? We must revisit claims made by Prophet Noble Drew Ali in relation to the above. The industrious acts of the Muslims of the Northwest and Southwest Africa, these are the Moabite, Hamathite, and Canaanites who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt. In later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called to this day Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, etc. The Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa. They were the founders and are true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. The Moabites from the land of Moab. Moab, Utah? What are you talking about? With their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. Seeking new homes. All right. So again, we're in the map. Out of Ham came Nimrod, right? What does it say here? It says that Nimrod was defied after death and placed in the constellation of Orion as hunting the great bear by his worshippers. He is the founder of what? Chaldea or Babylon. Same thing, Nimrod. Nimrod is from Ham. That's Mizraim's brother, Canaan's brother. They all they had a kingdom. Seems that only their history was told. Because this is what we learned growing up, right? Babylon, Assyrian, uh, Egypt, Canaan, Phoenicians, right? There you go, Assyria right here, Ashur. Look at that. All right, so this is the history we know. Hmm, are you starting to see a coincidence here? All right. Now let's go back. Pinpointing the exact pharaohs who granted these decrees has proven difficult however as Gadala notes the connection to Moab the Moors and Egypt is historically verifiable it's verifiable the counts of Moorish migration into North Africa can be found in ancient records they migrated there they came they were coming from America they had just been driven out Sir William Smith, lexicographer, author of Smith's Bible Dictionary, wrote in his collaborative works, Dictionary of Greek and Roman Geography. These Moors, who must not be considered as a different race from the Numidians, but as a tribe belonging to the same stock, were represented by Sallust as a remnant of the army of Hercules and by Procopius, volume 10 as the posterity of the Canaanians who fled from the robber Joshua all right this was a remnant of the army of Hercules Hercules wasn't he like half God and strong and everything isn't he a Greek all right you see who these Moors are yeah because we know we know like if you want to say Greeks were dark and oh uh, if you're using more as a reference to complexion then oh okay, yeah yeah they were dark skinned but that doesn't imply nation. This uh, dark complexion doesn't just mean one specific nation. All right. I've been reading a lot so far. Hopefully you guys are following. I haven't even touched on complexion yet. We're going to touch on that. But you can't generalize is my point. What I'm trying to say right now. There's a specific history to specific people, tribes, nations. We must understand so we can understand what's happening today. It was really in control. All right. So these are a remnant. These Moors, they're a remnant of the army of Hercules. And by Procopius, as the posterity of Canaanians who fled from the robber Joshua. He quotes two columns with a Phoenician inscription. Procopius has been supposed to be the only, or at least the most ancient author who mentions this inscription. And the invention of it has been attributed to himself. It occurs, however, in the history of Moses of Corinne, Moses of Corinne, 
who is this Moses of Corinth, 118, who wrote more than a century before Procopius. The same inscription is mentioned by Sudias. All right, so there's more than one reference to this inscription, who probably quotes from Procopius, according to the most of the Arabian writers, who adopted a nearly similar tradition. The indigenous inhabitants of North Africa were the people of Palestine expelled by David. Expelled by David. Oh, another people expelled by David. When they talk about people of Palestine, they mean ancient Canaan. And they're talking about America also. Expelled by David, King David, talking about city of david where's the city of david cusco peru what are we talking about Sacsayhuaman? did he expel them from there Is that what you mean and they had to go settle in north africa right david expelled them who passed into africa under the guidance of goliath whom they call the jalut the jalut smith 1852 they're also related to goliath hercules they're talking about giants lived in that island, Etheria, Atlanteans, the Poseidon. What are we talking about here? Huh? All right. So these Moors, all right, they're not a different race from the Numidians. All right, Numidians or the ancient Berbers, I guess. All right. And again, we were talking about David expelling Goliath, David versus Goliath. Remember a giant, David got him. So he had to bounce, I guess. And he took his people. They passed into Africa. He took his people into Africa, whom they call Dejalut. All right. Now we got this article right here online, right? And it says the role of Goliath in Moroccan Berber genealogies. All right. <laughs> and this is from the Journal of North African Studies, Volume 4, 1999, Issue 2, Tribe and Society in Rural Morocco. The role of Goliath in Morocco. Rock and Berber genealogies. All right. But I have this other article which I want to read. All right. Which is this one right here. And it's from the Kalmyuk Scientific Center of Russian Academy of Sciences, published in the Russian Federation Bulletin of the Kalmyuk Institute for Humanities of the Russian Academy of Sciences. All right, origin of the Berber Tribal Confederation of San Haja. Lecture Department of Arena. So, so this is from Anastasia V. Stepanova. All right. They're talking about the paper presents an ana analysis of the sources on the medieval history of the Maghrib in an attempt to identify the origin of the Berber Tribal Confederation of San Haja. All right. Now on page three of this, real quick, we're going to go and see actually page four all right so it says sahaja territory it says the berbers now, let me zoom into this you guys can read it better all right so it says the berbers are perhaps descendants of the ancient numidians whose country they now copy occupy their different tribes are scattered over the whole north africa intervening between the shores of the atlantic and the confines of egypt our accounts of this people are based on the works of Leo, Africanus, and Arab Islamic authors, Al Idrisi, who wrote in the middle of the 12th century AD, gave a wide description of the Berber tribes and the territories they occupied. Their original country was Palestine. All right, so remember, they're talking about ancient Canaan, and that was in America. All right, and their king was Goliath. Their king was Goliath. They're related to the Goliath. Yes, the one in the Bible that David fought. A giant. They're related to the Berbers, like we just read. All right. The Jalut, son of Daris, son of Diana, who was the ancestor of Sanata of the West. And Diana was the son of Liwa, son of Var, son of Kay, son of Ilias, son of Mudar. Mudar, remember that main language? When David, Daud, the peace be upon him slew goliath the berber he slew goliath the berber the berbers migrated westward till they reached the extreme limits of the maghrib then they split up there into tribes as to masata mugila and darisa they settled in the mountains as to lawata they settled in the land of sirenaika barca and a group of hawara settled in the mountains of Nafusa, 
the rest of them settled in the land of extreme Maghrib and the tribes of Masmuda with them. Then they together civilized that country and the Berber tribes are the following. Pay attention. The Sanata, the Darisa, the Mugila, Mukadar, the Banu Abd Rabi'in, the Warath Dujun, Nafsa, the Nafsawa, the Matmata, the Lamta, the Samhaja, the Hawara, Kutama, the Lawata, the Masata, Sadrata, Joslasa, the Madiuna, Sabuju, I'm probably murdering these names, but bear with me, the Madasa, the Kalima, Urba, Hatita, Walita, the Banu, the Manhus, the Banu, Samjun, the Banu Warslang, the Banu Jazdaran, the Banu Siriji, the Wardasa, the Warhun, and the other Berber tribes from those whom we shall mention through the power of Allah in connection with cultivated parts of their land. All right, so you see, those all those Berber tribes were descended from Goliath. And they were, you know, removed from the Holy Land by David. So not only Joshua, right, took their ancestors out, but also David, because there was still some there. David had to do the same. And this is the true old world. Of course, they were still there. They were all around. Not all of them left or bounced, you know. So David had to also do that. And you see, there's a whole groups of people that came out of Goliath and his kingdom. All those Berber tribes. All those Berber tribes. So it's correlating, right, with what uh, Homeboy was just reading in his article, the Moorish article, right? That we were just reading right now. Which he put, which he is stating, he's letting you know he's cool with this. He's letting you know he's citing the guy. He knows this author, this Moorish author who wrote this, he knows what's so he, he he understands the info, who he is. Alright, so he's, remember, expelled by David who passed into Africa under the guidance of Goliath whom they called the Jalut. Alright, now we're back in this article. It says an account of Moorish migration is noted in the historical records. The fact that these were the people of Canaan gives more credence to at least claims and makes them indisputable. What did I just tell you? He's agreeing with this. This Moorish scholars then you know he's okay with this information. This ain't no pseudo this ain't i'm not making things up we're just trying to be scholarly here right historical right we're not trying to just believe in doctrine and religions right we just believe the first thing we hear without verifying the rest of history or other nations history the other guy's story right now in reference to the expulsion of canaan by joshua and two white columns reign about Procopius, Niccolo Machiavelli, I, even Machiavelli got into this, called the founder of modern political science, retells the account, but instead of using the name Canaanites, he uses the name Mauruzzi, Mauru, Maurusi, a Roman name for the English word more we have today. All right, so you see Machiavelli straight up calling the Canaanites Moors. All right. Gilbert, 1989, page 346. In this instance, Canaanites and the Moors are one and the same. Canaanites and the Moors are one and the same. All right, we're getting different historical viewpoints. A separate paper will be drafted on the African Moorish Canaanite connection. All right, all right. Where's America in all this? Plum Serpent. Where's the Plum Serpent in all of this? If Roman historians Gaius Salustius Crispus, usually anglicized as Salus, saw the Moors as a remnant of the army of Hercules, it is safe to say that these two pillars bearing this Canaanite inscription were the mythical pillars of Hercules and Hellenistic Greek lore? Was not the land of the Moors right beyond the pillars of Hercules? Oh, you see this? Such a question genuinely arises from a weighty contemplation of the above sources. Nevertheless, to harp on that theory is futile at this juncture. Historical records proven a vanquished people by Joshua. Vanquished people by Joshua, they keep putting it, they keep saying it. As stated by Noble Drew Ali, Noble Drew Ali, biblically explained in the book of Joshua with the help of mystical general 
that stands with sword as a God worthy of praise and prostration, Joshua 5, 13, 15, and Jehovah himself in Joshua 10, 40, cannot be passed off as fraudulent under the due weight of the historical records. So they're saying, all right, it's smashing historical records, the Bible story. All right, it's smashing. It's matching. Some historians know two migrations into North Africa, both ancient, but one more ancient than the other. Malik Jafrik, a king of Arabia, Felix is said to have traveled from Arabia to the north of what we call Africa. Today, and from his name, Jafrik, which can be found in several variations, we have the name Africa today. But very naturally, as Dr. Moritz Wagner in works edited by Francis Pulski on a study of the peoples of Algeria, remarks on a specific group called the Mosabites. Take away the Z. What do you have? You have Moabites. Take away the C, right? The Z. And you have Moabites called the Mosabites living in that region. He notes the Mosabites or Beni Mosab are as yet little known. Little, they don't know nothing about them, but they are from their character and manners, a very interesting people, inhabiting three oases of the Sahara. A few hundred of them have settled in Algiers. Their origin is very uncertain, but several hypotheses have been advanced, any of which may be correct. According to their own traditions, their ancestors did not always dwell in the desert, but many years back they inhabited a mountainous country far to the east. A mountainous country far to the east. What happens if we flip the maps? From whence the Blue Sea could be seen, Leo Africanus, a learned Moorish author, converted to Christianity. <laughs> so, Leo Africanus, a learned Moorish author. All right. What does that mean, Moorish? Based on what you're teaching us, Sheikh Elway, you mean ancient Canaanite Moabite author converted to Christianity? Who lived in the 16th century tells us that the Canaanites, expelled by Joshua, emigrated to African and settled there all right that's where they settled why do they show relation in dna test where did you come from originally you came from here this is the this is the true old world but you had your own lot your at least your ancestors did and they, they didn't go to it that's why you got expelled by joshua the same author says that malek afriki several centuries later be headed a large emigration of Saboan Arabs to Africa. And it is singular that the Jews seem likewise to believe in a double immigration of Asiatic nations to Barbary. All right. And it, again, it is singular that the Jews seem likewise to believe in a double immigration of Asiatic nations to Barbary, Asiatic nations the Far East, Asia, what, what, what are you talking about? Up to the present day, they call the Kabylis, Palestines, and Philistines, identifying them with their enemies of old in Canaan. And their rabbis believe that the Mosabites are the descendants of Moabites. All right? They are the descendants of Moabites, the ancient neighbors of Israel, the offspring of Moab, the son of Lot, Polsky, 1854. Clearly, this name Mozab, Mozabite, is an alternate of Moab, where the letter Z replaces the apostrophe as the elision in the name Moab. All right, they just added the Z as an apostrophe. A critical analysis of this aspect will be given in the attempted etymology traced by this author shortly. This tribe, as per one reference, also took for themselves the names Ben Saram, Ben Elam, Ben Salef, and Ben Johav. All right, so you see, these are Moabites with the Ben, Ben, Ben. Certain Mohammedan sects picked up these bigoted traditions from the Bible, and these Moors were excluded from certain mosques in Algeria, noting that they were excluded from the congregation of the Lord. All right, showing that the influence of the biblical narrative and its chosen people, supremacy. All right, so now. Now somebody sounds like somebody's taking this person as a little salted. All right. Yeah, I guess, you know, 
saying, yo, certain people are the chosen people. But if, it, if you're not part of that, I guess now it's a doctrine, right? Now it's supremacy. But who got erased as a nation? Who really got erased as a nation today? Moors are still known. You have your whole history, right? This is, I'm just trying to be real right here. But when you look at the ancient Israelites, where are they? Because we know the ones in Israel today are not the real ones, right? So where are they? Talking about supremacy and chosen people. All right, I, this just sounds a little like somebody's getting a little personal with it, right? Like somebody's taking it to the heart that he's not considered chosen people. All right, now. He's saying that this doctrine has permeated certain Islamic regions and sects. For the record, no such provisions exist in the Quran of, of Mecca. It has also been noted that a tribe called the Walid Haman, situated among the coastal tribes of San Sibar, whom the Jews asserted to be the children of Ammon, would customarily be visited by the Mozabites for several ages after performing the pilgrimage to Mecca as a gesture of acknowledgement. All right, that's the book. And it says this is a Mozabite Berber man, all right? Half-length portrait standing facing from Algeria, dated between 1860 and 1890, courtesy of Library of Commerce. This is an ancient Moabite. Florian's history of the Moors in Spain also highlights this migration and the aforementioned Arabian king who leads his people into Arabia, but with a bit more detail. Now listen to this, all right? Again, this is... Florian's history of the Moors in Spain, right? All right, so just continuing with this topic of these migrations and these people settling in North uh, America. Who were these people? These first Libyans, these first North Africans. Uh, I got this uh, in this book, History of the Moors of Spain, uh, is the book translated from the French original of Jean Pierre Claris by M. Florian, to which is added a brief notice of Isl Islamism. All right, this is from 18. 60 all right 1860 and we're in the very first part or chapter of this book it's called the history of the moors of spain again first epic the conquest of the arabs or moors extending from the end of sixth sixth century to the middle of the english that says the primitive moors were the inhabitants of the vast portion of africa bounded on the east by egypt on the north by the mediterranean and on the west by the atlantic and on the south by the deserts of barbary the origin of the Moors or Mauritanians is like that of most other ancient nations obscure. They don't know or they say they don't know, right? And in the information we possess concerning their early history, conf confusedly mingled with fables, all right? They don't know where they came from, but we are correlating, right? If they came from ancient Canaan. They're talking about America, right? So let's see what they're saying here. It says the fact, however, appears to be established that Asiatic immigrations were from the earliest times made into Africa. We know that, right? In addition to this, the historians of remote ages speak of certain Melek Jarfrik, king of Arabia, Felix, who conducted a people called Sabai into Libya, made himself master of that country, established his followers there, and gave it the name of Africa. It is from these Sabians or Sabayan that the principal Moorish tribes pretend to trace their descent. The der derivation of the name Moors is also supposed in some degree to confirm the impression that they came originally from Asia. All right, so when they say in Asia, because they're trying to relate Palestine and Israel, right? And since that's in the Middle East, basically Western Asia, that's where they're going with this, all right? But if you keep going, I mean, Asia is connected to America. It's just like, it's a trick in words here, all right? Now, we know, like they're saying, these are the ancient people of Canaan, remember, all right? Canaan was in America, all right? They're trying to tell us that Canaan was in Asia, right? That's what history tells us, the Canaan, the Garden of Eden, all that was in Asia. So that's what they're saying. They definitely know that they weren't from there originally, all right? But without enlarging upon these ancient statements, let it suffice to say that nearly certain grounds exist for the belief that the original Moors were Arabians. The original Moors were Arabians. 
And if we follow Arabians, most of them come from Ishmaelites, a son of Abraham, right? But not, you know, not not related to Isaac. I mean, that's his brother, but not from the Isaac line. All right. In confirmation of this impression, we find that during every period of the existence of their race, the descendants of the primitive inhabitants of Mauritania have, like the Arabs, been divided into distinct tribes, and like them have pursued a wild and wandering mode of existence. The Moors of Africa are known in ancient history under the name of Nomadis, Numidae. So remember the Numidians, Numidians, Getule and Masili, the Numidians came from Goliath. Right? We just read that Goliath. All right. So again, the Moors of Africa are known in ancient history under the name of nomad, nomadis, nomads, nomads, travelers, travelers, nomads, nomadis, numidai or numidians. Right? Remember Goliath. He brought his people over to Africa. They became known as the Numidians. Goliath was a Berber uh, ancestor. These were people that got kicked out by David from Canaan, America, David, David, Prester John, I'm talking about Prester John, so-called, they were the, by turns the subjects, the enemies or the allies of the Carthaginians, all right, Carthaginians, and I'm relating, I'm seeing a lot of correlation to Carthaginians being in America, all right, and with them they fell under the dominion of the Romans. After several unsuccessful revolts to which they were instigated by their fiery, restless, and inconstant temper, the Moors were at length subjugated by the Vandals, AD 427. All right, so I just wanted to read this part uh, from this book again, The History of the Moors of Spain. All right, I just want to show you that, you know, they're also correlating that, you know, these people might immigrated there and that they might be from what they would, what they're, when they're saying Asia, they're talking about the promised land, Canaan. All right, and uh, again, they're Numidians, all right? Numidians, uh, Berber genealogy, Goliath. Again, fits the same story of King David fighting Goliath and expelling them. And you see, he brought his whole people over here, just like uh, people in ancient times with Joshua. They had to flee, right? They flee because the robber Joshua took them out of there, expelled them, right? So they had to go find new lands. They were seeking new homes. All right, you see how it's correlating, right? So I'm um, Let's go back to the other article. And we're back in the article, Moors, Moabites, and Berbers from Sheikh Elway, right, the Moors uh, Science Academy, right? And um, he continues saying here, the question then arises as to how do these Moors equate with the Moabites? What proofs do we have that these same Moors being spoken about in such glory and magnanimity are the same Moors who are the people called anciently Moabites? And are these people that migrated from Arabia or Canaan in ancient times? All right. Moors identified as Moabites in the historical record. In the medieval Christian records, the correlation between Moors and Moabites illumines itself like light entering a dark room. In the chronicles of Charlemagne, king of France, 742, 840, 814 AD, the Moors who are overtaking Europe are interchangeably called Moabites and Saracens, all right? So in the Chronicles of Charlemagne, all right, from those times, 700 ADs, they were referencing the Moors interchangeably and in calling them Moabites and Saracens, Saracens, sons of Sarah, sons of Sarah, the wife of Abraham. Didn't Abraham have Isaac and Ishmael? Didn't they just say the Moabites are mostly Arabians, the ancient Arabians? Ishmaelites has, seem to go all the way back to trace to Ish, Ishmael. And they would be considered a son of Sarah, of, of the great grandmother, right? Sarah's sons. All right, and Moabites. All right, it says the holy faith then flourished well and beautifully in Hispania for a long time until ungodly Saracens and Moabites raged in warlike fashion with plunder and manslaughter against the aforesaid realm, burning towns and castles alike, tearing down churches and other holy places, slaying every man who would not deny his God. All right. 
you will come in the more Saracens and more Bites. All right, it's not just Drew Ali. We're gonna read into Drew Ali. Trust me, we're gonna get into all his books, but I wanted to have this reference before we got into that, right? So you can see, it's not just Drew Ali saying this. In the above quote, remember where we are, all right? This is from by Chiquay L, the Moorish American Research Group for the Moorish Science Society. Now it says in the above quote, reference number 15, is superscripted next to the name Moabites. The reference shows that Moabites are also the name as, as Moabites and Almoravides. All right, same. Moabites are the Almoravides Moabites. The name Moabite in place of Moor can also be found mentioned on pages 66, 68, 79, and 80. You will find reference in the glossary for proper names on page 438, where Moabites are called also Almoravites and Morabites. And on page 437 in the same glossary, the original name for Morocco is rendered Marab. Obviously, a play on the word Moab. Marab, Moab. With the elision filled with the letter R. It is without question that the Almoravids are the Moabites who are the Moors that first went into Spain. In fact, in many Christian chronicles, Moab is used in place or interchangeably with Moor. All right? It is without a question, okay? It is without a question that the Almoravids are the Moabites who are the Moors that first went into Spain. All right, these are the same people. In fact, many Christian chronicles, Moab is used in place of interchangeably with Moor. Moor with their king, Ali, have a special name which is Moabite. That is the same as Al Moravit, O'Callaghan, 2002. Several texts will be referenced from the Christian sources which unequivocally show that Moor and Moab were interchangeable terms. Moor and Moab were interchangeable terms. The immense army of the Moabites and Hagarinis went to Toledo and attacked San Fernando, but its high towers were not damaged. The latter joined in many battles in the land of Moabites and Haraginis. The battles with Count Rodrigo Gonzalez and Rodrigo Fernandez waged with the kings of the Moabites and Hagarinis were extremely hard fought, but these are not described in this book, all right, Barton 2000, all right? So you see when they're referencing Spain and all these people being, uh, uh, Iberia being taken over, Toledo and Portugal and Spain, they were referencing Moors as Moabites and Hagarinis, or descendants of Hagar, Egyptians, Hagar, Moorish Spain was ruled by the Almoravides, who were Berbers, all right? Berbers came from Goliath, right? We just read that. Almoravides, who were the sons of Goliath, who got expelled from Canaan by David, King David expelled, all right, these Berbers, and came from the, the Sahara. And that the chronicle states, the great army of Moabites and Haggadites, meaning Berbers and Arabs, meaning Berbers and Arabs, reached Toledo and attacked the fortress of San Servando. Thereupon the Saracens moved onto Aseca. All right. When the native Muslims of An Andalus rose up in rebellion against the Almoravids, so there was already Muslims there, the native ones, native, before the Almoravids or the Mo Moabites arrived, their animosity was such fervor that it provoked comment in Castilian chronicles with dramatic license. One such chronicle gave voice to Andalusi discontent, Andalusia. The Moabites eat of the fat of the land and our properties. They carry off gold and silver from us, oppress our wives and children. Therefore, let us fight them and kill them and cast off their domination from us. The recognition of this distinction was no mere literary conceit and translated into practical terms in the surrender document of Tudela in 1115. All right, they're letting you know that there was already native Muslims in Andalusia or Andalus. They had nothing to do with Almoravites or Moors. 
or Berbers. All right, and they actually were trying to fight them and they wanted to kill them. All right. And this happened in 1115 in the document of Tudela, which admitted the difference between local Muslims and the Almoravides. The difference. The same distinction was made at Tortosa, where the Christian powers promised, and if the Almoravids do any ill to the Christians who are among them or in their lands, the men of Tortosa will not do any ill on that account. All right, so it says the above text clearly notes the fact that the Moabites are the Moors. The last reference, Almoravid, is translated to Moabites. In reading these passages, this researcher wonders if these Moors, Moabites, if these Moors, Moabites, were so staunchly trying to eradicate Christian rule, attempting to destroy the fabricated story of the Moabites that can be found within this text, one would wonder if any oppression of the Jews by the Moabites was a reaction of, to a fictitious story that spread over two millenniums, which referenced the Moabites as the spawns of shame. One more reference to highlight for this section, and that is a possible connection of Moab to a West African tribe. The parallels, insofar as this name is concerned, and those surrounding it cannot be left out, all right, to a West African tribe. The people are called Moba. Variations for this nation's language is Moab and Moari. This researcher does not believe this to be coincidental. The same name, according to the Library of Congress reference cited, is being used as a language to reference the Moabite stone. The Moabite stone, we're going to get into that. The Moabite stone. If there are any correlations to this find, it will require much detailed study, mentioning for future research. <laughs>